Welcome back, and if it's your first time, hello, this is Projectarian and I'm Jessie. This video is a supplement to my Luna the Lima pattern. It pertains to part 4 of the pattern and it's the third and last video of the series. Please check the description box below for more information about this crochet along. Today I'm going to show you how to make the muzzle, starting from where things get a bit tricky, which is when you get to the top of the nose. I'll walk you through the next 13 whole pages and finish at row 1 of the head. This is a long video because it's the hardest part of the whole pattern and I really wanted to go into minute detail with this video because I don't want anyone to get stuck and not be able to complete their project because it really is doable. At the end of the day we're just working single crochets and slip stitches into certain spaces and if you just follow the directions I promise you this is possible for anybody who knows how to crochet. What I'll be showing you here is exactly the same as what's written in the pattern. This is just a supplement to help make the pattern easier to follow. I'm going to be reading what the pattern says and then showing you how to do the steps. So you should keep your pattern handy so you can follow along with me as we go. To prepare for this part you'll need to start in the chapter titled head in the pattern and make all the pieces until you reach the heading top of the nose. That's where this tutorial begins. I'm sure some of you might not want to spend forever watching this very long video so I have divided it into chapters which you can click on in the description box. So if you just need help with one small part you can skip ahead to that part of the video and then be done with it. And if you would like to be spoon fed the whole way, I'm here to do that for you. After this video, the rest of the pattern is pretty straightforward, so you're not likely to get stuck. But if you do find yourself needing help, there is a dedicated support group to help you with the pattern on Facebook. So check the description box for that link. If you do need help at any point, post your questions on Facebook and there will be someone to guide you step by step, so don't give up. Lastly, I'm still pretty new at filming crochet. I wanted to do this with a bigger hook and make it easier for the video, but I couldn't because of reasons. So I'm using a 1.5mm hook, just like you will be, and so at some points it gets pretty awkward for me to film what I'm doing while I'm trying to see the tiny stitches. This isn't an issue when I'm not trying to film, so if it looks awkward and maybe it's painful to watch, especially when I'm doing decreases, I apologize for that. And again, don't let it discourage you, it's much easier to crochet when you're not trying to film it. Okay, let's begin. My yarn looks a bit overused and abused because this is some leftover yarn that I used to design Luna that I've just kept aside for the video. I've already made all the pieces that I need for this section. So we're going to begin from the point where you have made your nostrils marked them and woven in the loose ends at the magic ring. So we're starting at top of nose. Working into the back loops only on the nostril, on nostril 1, that's the one with the purple marker, join colour 1 in the fifth single crochet with a slip stitch. And it also tells you to work from the inside of the cup outwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my fifth single crochet it's before the marker into the back loop only join color five with a slip stitch chain one and work two single crochets chain two then starting in the marked stitch on the next nostril two single crochets remember we're working in the back loops Chain one and turn. Work three single crochets. And it says when you get to the chain, work into it 
um, just as described on page 5 of the Amiga Rumi Tips booklet. The only difference is that you're entering from the back of the chain instead of the front. One, two, and the third single crochet goes into the chain, just working into that top loop of the chain. Three, then work one increase. and two more single crochets. Then work one slip stitch into the front loop only on the next single crochet on the nostril. So there's my nostril, there's my next single crochet, I'm going to work one slip stitch into the front loop. The front loop is the one that's facing me. One slip stitch. Turn. Don't chain one. Now skipping that slip stitch that you've just worked. Start in the last single crochet of your row and work a decrease. And remember decreases should be invisible, so you're just working into the front loops for your decrease. three single crochets and then work another decrease Then work one slip stitch into the back loop only on the next single crochet on the nostril. There's your nostril, there's the next single crochet, work into the back loop one slip stitch. Tie off. Now you can remove the markers as you reach them. Rotate the piece as illustrated. It's that way. Working into the marked single crochet on nostril 2 again. That's this stitch. Join color 1 with the slip stitch in the back loop only. Now it said we can remove the marker, so I'm going to remove it, but pay attention to where I want to work into that back loop. and then remove my marker. Join color one with a slip stitch. Chain one and mark the chain. To mark the chain, I'm just gonna hook my marker around it like that. Then skipping that slip stitch, that you worked into the nostril there and work two single crochet into the next two chain Then one slip stitch into the back loop only of the marked stitch on the nostril. And I can remove that marker because I've reached it. Chain one and turn. 
mark that chain the same way as you did the one before. So again, I'm just going to hook my marker through there, clip it. Then skip the slip stitch that you've just worked into that nostril and work into your single crochet stitches you've got there. Work two single crochets. Let's keep that nice and tight. Then work one slip stitch into the marked chain. So now I can remove this marker and work into the little hole that it's marking there. One slip stitch. Chain one and turn. Skip that slip stitch that you worked into the chain. Working into your single crochets again, work two single crochets. Slip stitch into the marked chain again. So I'm going to remove that and work into that little hole that it came out of. One slip stitch. Then tie off. The nose is starting to take shape. Take note of the intended result and in the pattern it shows you that the nose should be a little T shape. Now at any point during the project from now until your lime is completely finished, you can help shape your nose by pinching it into a T shape. Like that. And you can help shape the nostrils by pushing something into them like a pencil or the back of your hook. It doesn't make that much of a difference at this point but it will help later on to know this so you can keep your nose looking good. Flip the nose to be wrong side facing up. In the first available stitch on the right nostril next to the nose, that is the right hand nostril next to the nose when the nose is wrong side facing up. There's your first available stitch next to the nose. Join color 5 with a slip stitch in the front loop only. In the front loop only. Join color 5 with a slip stitch. Chain 1. Starting in the next single crochet, work 5 single crochets across the top of the nose in the front loops only. Again, the front loops are the ones that are facing you. If you're not sure where to begin, you can turn it over so you can see the right side of your stitches. You want to work 5 across here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know we should start over there. In the back of that stitch. And on the side that you're working on, that is the front loop, it's the loop that's facing you. One, two, three, Four, five, on the nostril, work two slip stitches in the front loops only. 
there's my next available stitch on the nostril in the front loop slip stitch and then the next front loop another slip stitch turn and don't chain one skip those two slip stitches that you've just worked one two I'm going to start in that stitch there skip one two start in that stitch there work two single crochets one increase two single crochets and then in the next stitch on the nostril work one slip stitch into the back loop only there's my next stitch on the nostril into the back loop one slip stitch mark the first and the last single crochet I'm just going to remove my hook so it's a bit easier now if you're confused about which is your first and last single crochet we know that our last stitch was a slip stitch so we ignore that the one next to it is a single crochet we know that's our last single crochet and then we know we had two single crochets then an increase and then two single crochets so that is our first single crochet put my hook back in there continue working on the nostril and work into both loops of the stitches work six single crochets so I'm going to start in the very next stitch on the nostril working into both loops as I go six stitches Chain two, skip behind the nose post, then on the next nostril work six single crochets. So I want to keep the nose post, that's the nose post, I want to keep that in front of my two chain. And then I want to work into the nostril. So my next available stitch on the nostril is there. It's right next to where I'd worked into one of the loops there, that back loop. There's my single crochet. I'm going to work into there, into both loops, work six stitches. So my chain has gone behind the nose, there's my two chain, and my nose post is in front of it. Work one slip stitch in the next single crochet on the top of the nose, the one with the orange marker. So we'll work one slip stitch into there. Mark the first single crochet and the last slip stitch of this row. So I'm just going to remove my hook to make it easier. Now I know the stitch that I just worked was a slip stitch, so I must mark that as my last slip stitch. And I must mark my first single crochet. The stitch next to my orange marker is a slip stitch, and the next one after that is my first single crochet. 
So skip one stitch after your orange marker and mark your first single crochet. That's what the back looks like at the moment. Then I'll put my loop back on the hook. Chain one and turn. Skip the slip stitch and remove the marker. Working this row in the front loops only. Work two single crochets. So I'm going to skip my slip stitch, work into the front loop. One, two, Mark the chain and the first single crochet. Remember to keep working in the front loops two increases two slip stitches Mark the last slip stitch. That is the stitch that you've just made. Chain two. Then skip the chain that you have going across the back of the nose. Working on the next nostril, two slip stitches. So you can always look at the front to see clearly where your single crochet actually is, where you should work into. And I can see that stitch there is my single crochet. And I want to work into the front loops only. Two slip stitches. One. Two. Mark the last slip stitch. Two increases. Two single crochets. And you can remove the marker to work your second single crochet. Skip the slip stitch. Working into both loops, don't remove the marker. Work one slip stitch. Mark the last single crochet and the last slip stitch. So those are my last two stitches I just worked. There's my slip stitch. And there's my last single crochet. Remove the markers as you reach them. Chain one and do not turn. Starting in the current stitch, so where you've just worked into both loops of that marked stitch. Work a decrease into the back loops only. So I'm going to remove that marker. And now, although I have already worked into the stitch, I'm going to work into it again, but just into the back loop this time. And the back loop of the next stitch to make my 
invisible decrease. Then work two single crochet, another decrease and remove the marker. Decrease in the back loops only. And then into both loops of the last single crochet work one slip stitch. So I have already worked into the last single crochet. I've worked into the back loop of that stitch to make my decrease. So into that same stitch that I used for the decrease, the same stitch where I used the back loop, I'm now going to work into both loops of that stitch and work a slip stitch. Chain one and turn. Skip the slip stitch that you've just made, working into your last single crochet, work one single crochet. One decrease. One single crochet. Chain one and turn. Work one decrease into the back loops only across all three stitches, skipping the middle stitch. So I have three single crochets here. One, two, three. Now it says to skip the middle one, work into the back loops only and make a decrease. So into the back loop of the first one, skip the middle one, into the back loop of the last one and make a decrease. Mark the decrease and tie off. I'm just going to trim these ends that I did work in, I did crochet over them as I went. To make it more secure you can weave these ends in. On the wrong side of the nose, on the lemur's left hand nostril. So if you're looking at the lemur, if this is the lemur's face, that's the lemur's nose. This is the lemur's left hand side. On that nostril, the lemur's left hand nostril. Join color five with a slip stitch in the second stitch after the first two markers. So we have one, two in the second stitch after the first two markers. Chain one, work four single crochet. and one slip stitch. Chain one and turn. Starting in the slip stitch, that little slip stitch that you just worked, starting in there. Um, work one single crochet in the front loop only. Three 
three single crochets. One increase. Chain one and turn, working into the back loops, one decrease. Three single crochets. One increase. Chain one and turn, four single crochets. Decrease. Chain one and turn, working in the back loops, decrease. Three single crochets. Chain one and turn, two decreases. Chain four, mark the first of those four chains but into the top loop only. So I'm looking at my chain from the front. One, two, three, four. There's my first chain and that is the top loop. Turn your workpiece as illustrated, that's that way. Then working into the wrong side of the chain, which is what you're looking at once you've turned it. Starting in the second chain from your hook, work three single crochets. So my mark is, yeah, I know that's, that's my first of the four chains, second, third, and fourth, okay? Now the second chain from my hook would be one, two, And another one and a third one. Now you've used up all four of your chains. Then skip the next single crochet and work one slip stitch into the last single crochet. So if you look at the other side you can see the the right side of your single crochet stitches you can see you have two there so you're going to skip one and work a slip stitch into the next one mark the slip stitch And tie off.
on the right side of the nose on the lemur's right hand side nostril Join colour 5 with a slip stitch in the first marked stitch and do not remove the marker. Chain 1 and work 4 single crochet. One slip stitch, chain one and turn, starting in the slip stitch work one single crochet in the back loop only. So that's my little slip stitch in the back loop only one single crochet, then three single crochets, and increase. Chain one and turn, decrease, Three single crochets, increase, chain one and turn, four single crochets, Decrease in the back loops only. Chain one and turn. Decrease. Three single crochets, chain one and turn, two decreases in the back loops only, chain four, and mark the first of the four chains in the top loop only. Four, three, two, one. Turn your workpiece as illustrated. Working on the wrong side of the chain and starting in the second chain from your hook, work three single crochets. So remember I marked the fourth one so I know that's number four, three, two and one. So I can count one from my hook, two from my hook and work in there. Then skip the next stitch and work one slip stitch into the last single crochet. 
So again, if you're struggling to see these stitches, you can turn it over. I can see my two single crochets very clearly there. So I'm going to skip the first one and work a slip stitch into the last one. And tie off. We are getting somewhere. The front of the muzzle is almost complete. The colored part of the muzzle, should I say. Remove the markers as you reach them on the lemur's right hand side. Join color 5 with a slip stitch in the first single crochet as illustrated. So in the picture, the muzzle is like this. And we've got the hook coming into the first single crochet here. Remember you worked three single crochets into your chain. Three, two, one. There's your first one. Join color five with a slip stitch. Chain one. One single crochet in each of the next four stitches, including the slip stitch. One. Two, three, and then I have that slip stitch. There's a slip stitch to work into. Four. Working evenly up to the next marker. That is my next marker and finishing in the marked stitch. So I want to finish with my hook going into there. Work seven single crochets in the front loops only and two slip stitches in the front loops only. So let's see, I want to work seven single crochet and two slip stitches with my last one being there. So I'm going to plan, I'm going to work a slip stitch there and a slip stitch there. And then my seven single crochets are going to go along here. So I'm going to work into front loops only and fit seven single crochets along here. One, two, and now because it doesn't specify where you should be working into, you can really just work into whatever space is easiest for you, just as long as you get seven single crochets in there. Three, Four, five, six, seven, and then two slip stitches. Remember to work in the front loops only. And I have finished up with my last slip stitch in that marked stitch. We can remove this marker. This is the nose post. Here are our stitches that we can work into. Work a single crochet decrease on the last row and tuck the loose end to the back of the nose. So working into these single crochet stitches that I can see here into the front loops because it's a decrease. One decrease. And I'm keeping the loose end to the back of the nose. Then working on the lip again, so that will be on this lip. Starting in the stitch before the marker. There 
I can see it stitch that I can work into there. Working evenly up to but not into the next marked stitch were two slip stitches in the front loops and seven single crochets in the front loops. So I'm going to start before the marker I'm going to work two slip stitches and then in the space left over I'm going to work seven single crochets. I'm going to fit them in there and I'm going to stop right before I reach the stitch that is marked over here. Remember to work in the front loops and start with two slip stitches. One, remove the marker and work another slip stitch. And then seven single crochets that we can fit into whatever space we can find to work here. One, two, three, four, five, six, And seven. There's my seven single crochets and I've finished right next to the stitch that has the orange marker in it. Starting in the marked stitch, so now we can work into those loops that are marked by the orange marker to slip stitch. Work four single crochets. Then mark the first and last single crochet of this row. So I mark the last stitch that I just worked and the first one of this row. I'm just going to pull this loose end to the back. I accidentally pulled it to the front. And put my loop back on my hook. Do not tie off. Continue working the edge around the rest of the muzzle as follows. And note if you struggle to identify shared stitches, now a shared stitch is one that you've already worked into that you will need to work into again later. If you struggle to identify these, leave the left hand side yellow marker attached until directed to remove it. When directed to work into a row, crochet into the side of it and into one loop only. Work one single crochet in the front loop of the next row. Remember we had our four chain there and we marked the first of our four chain and then we had some single crochets worked into the chain. So it's telling you to work one single crochet into the side of the row. So we know that we want to work into the side of this stitch before you reach the chain. So we work into the side there. One single crochet into each of the next three chain. Working evenly up to the next marker and finishing in the marked stitch, work six single crochets in the front loops and then two normal single crochets. You can see over here I have two stitches that I can work into. So I'm going to work my, my last two in there. I'm going to work my six in the front loops of this edge.
again because it doesn't specify precisely which loops to work into just work where you are comfortable working into one loop only at a time until you have six stitches evenly across the top of that lip there and then work two single crochet so now working into the stitches like normal into two loops one single crochet and in the marked stitch another single crochet Starting in the next mark stitch, work four single crochets in the front loop only. Work them evenly along the side of the bridge of the nose. So fit four single crochets in this edge here, working into the front loops. Just anywhere that you can find a gap to insert your hook so that you can work four single crochets evenly across this edge. Then increase into the marked stitch. If you pull your loose end tight and you look from the top, those two little loops that you can see when you're looking from the top, that is your stitch. Increase. And again, I accidentally pulled my loose end to the front. I'm just going to pull that to the back. In the front loops only, work four single crochet evenly down the other side of the bridge, finishing in the next marked stitch. So again, wherever you can find a place to insert your hook. In the next marked stitch, work one single crochet in the front loop only. So now you can remove that marker. And the stitch that that marker was marking, that already has a stitch worked into it, you're going to work just into the front loop of that stitch. Working evenly up to the next marker, work 7 single crochets in the front loops only. Now I've reached the next marker, starting in the marked chain, work one single crochet in each of the three chains. And then work one single crochet into the side of that row. and one slip stitch into the first single crochet. Don't tie off, weave in and trim any loose ends that are remaining at the back of the nose. And when you do that, try not to sew them or pull them in any kind of way that's going to 
pull on your nose and distort it. So I will do that and come back when my um, ends are all woven in. Congratulations, you've got this far. Let's see what's next. Okay, now we're going to join the palette to the top lip. As you can see in the picture, your top lip should be orientated like this. And your palette should be wrong side up, which means that you should be able to see the chains. You're going to be working into the right side of your lip and into the wrong side of your palette. So you're working into the wrong side of these stitches along the edge. You're going to be starting in the same stitch where you worked your slip stitch here. So chain one and insert your hook into that stitch. And then starting from the last stitch on your palette, skip the first two, one, two, and insert your hook at the third stitch and work a single crochet to join them. It says working into both pieces simultaneously, work 11 single crochets. So I've already worked one, I'm going to work 10 more. And working simultaneously into both pieces means insert your hook in the next stitch on the top lip and in the next stitch on the palette, work a single crochet. And again, top lip, palette, single crochet for 11 stitches. Then work five slip stitches, still working the two pieces together. Then work 11 single crochets. And then, of course, you can remove this marker when you reach it. And then your top lip is attached to your top palette. That's pretty exciting. Mark the first and the last single crochet that you just made. I haven't tied off or anything, I've just removed my hook. There's my last stitch. Then 
there is my first one. Don't remove these markers as you work into the stitches. Turn, don't chain one, and work 27 slip stitches. So it means I must work one slip stitch into each of the 27 stitches. Starting in my last single crochet, And we want to work these slip stitches tightly because we want them to cinch the top lip so that it doesn't stick out like this. It's going to pull that in a little bit. When I reach the slip stitches here, I'm working into both loops of the stitches just like you would with any other stitch. Then you can tie off and weave in that loose end. I will weave my loose end now and then come back again. Before you begin, cut a 1 meter length of colour 2 and keep it aside for use at the end of row 3. Remove each marker as you reach it on the edge of the lip. Join colour 2 with a slip stitch in the marked stitch on the lemur's left hand side. So this is the lemur's left. In the marked stitch, you can remove the marker as you reach it, so remove that one. Insert your hook, join colour 2 with a slip stitch, then on the wrong side of the next stitch on the palette work one single crochet. Now we go to the palette, we look at the wrong side, the wrong side is the side with the chains on it. Insert your hook in the next stitch on the wrong side of the palette and work one single crochet. Then working onto the right side of the muzzle, one single crochet in the shared stitch of the top lip. Now the stitch is shared by the row that joins the palette to the lip and it would be marked by yellow if you had kept the marker attached. But now I can see here this row of stitches is the row that joins my palette to my top lip because remember these are my slip stitches and that's my joining row so where this stitch is worked into the top lip there where the joining row is worked into the top lip that first stitch that is the shared stitch that you want to work into so work one single crochet in there. Okay. 
mark the first and the second stitch. So mark those two stitches that you just made. Now working in the back loops only from now on and starting in the next single crochet on the right side of the muzzle's edge work an increase, work two increases, sorry. So we want to work onto the muzzle's edge, we want to work onto the right side, I am looking at the right side. We want to start in the very next single crochet, that is this one, it's the very first stitch that I can work into over there and we want to work into back loops only so starting right there in the back loop work an increase and another increase two single crochets decrease remember work in the back loops only Five single crochets, decrease, two single crochets. Four increases, two single crochet. Decrease. Five single crochet, decrease, Two single crochets, two increases, then you just have one stitch left over between your marker and the increase that you just made into that stitch work in both loops work one single crochet in the wrong side of the next stitch on the palette work one single crochet then we're going to mark your two last stitches so i'm going to go ahead and mark this one first just to make it easy because I'm going to have to mark it anyway. And then working into the wrong side of the next stitch on the top palette. So there's my top palette. Remember the wrong side is the side that has the chains on it. And that there next to the marker Next to the marker, I have one stitch that I can work into. So if you look at the picture in the pattern, it shows you to hold the muzzle like this. So you are looking at 
the top loops of those stitches. We've already identified we want to work into that one and we want to come in from the wrong side. So you hold it like this, going from the wrong side and work your single crochet. Not the easiest stitch in the world to do, I'll show you again. Holding your muzzle so that you can see the loops of the stitches on the palette. Working into the one next to the marked stitch and coming in from the side that has the chains on it. Insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and draw through both loops. And then mark that stitch and give yourself a pat on the back. Well done! Then one slip stitch into the marked single crochet on the top lip. And it specifically says not into the slip stitch but into the single cro crochet that the slip stitch is worked into. So remember this tight little row is your slip stitches and the ones that the slip stitches are worked into are single crochets which is where your marker is. So work a slip stitch in the hole where that marker is. And you can remove that marker. Removing markers is fun. <laughs> you know you don't have to worry about that stitch anymore. There is your completed first row of white or whatever color you're using. Remove the markers as you reach them. Chain one and turn. Work one single crochet into the right side of the next stitch on the palette. That is the marked stitch. So the right side of the palette is the one without the chains. That's the right side. Now we only have one marked stitch on the palette. I'm going to remove the marker and work into there. And make a single crochet. Then working into the wrong side of row one, this is row one, we want to work into the wrong side of it. Starting in the first stitch, which is this green marked one, work four single crochets. So you're going to work into the green marked one, work into the purple marked one, then work two more and remove the markers as you reach them. And remember we're working into the wrong side. One and it's going to tell you to mark the first one of these four stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that now. And then I'm going to work stitch number two, which is where the purple marker is. Two, three, and four. Then work two increases. Then working in the back loops only, work two decreases. One increase. One single crochet, one increase. Working in the back loops only, work three decreases.
four increases. Working in the back loop only, work three decreases. One increase. One single crochet, one increase in the back loops only work two decreases. Two increases. And then work four single crochets. So we have two stitches left over before our marker. So one, two, remove a marker, three, and move the next marker and make sure that you work into the wrong side of that stitch in there. Four. Flip your workpiece as illustrated in the third image below. So starting like this, flip it like that. Then working into the right side of the palette, work one single crochet into the marked stitch. So we only have one marked stitch left over. We are currently looking at the right side of it. Remember the right side has no chains. So I'm going to remove that marker. Remember that's the stitch I'm working into. I'm going to bring my hook around, come from the right side go into that stitch and work a single crochet I'll show you that move again I was on this side turn and look at the right side of your palette coming from the right side insert your hook in there And work one single crochet. Well done! Mark the second last stitch. I know um, when I say second last stitch then my testers are like what does that mean? <laughs> so I guess um, other people don't use that terminology so that's why in my patterns I write the second to last stitch. Um, I think that's American terminology I guess. One, two, Then chain one and tie off. Now you have a nice white edge all the way around your muzzle. All the stitches on the edge of your palette have been used up. Then on the wrong side of the palette weave in any loose ends. So I will weave those in and come back when I'm done. Okay, all my loose ends have been woven in. Stuff the nose, shaping it as illustrated. And as a tip, Batting can be used here as stuffing, using pea-sized pieces inside the nose and compacting it firmly without distorting the nose. So at all times you want to preserve this little T-shape and the deep nostrils. So from inside the muzzle, push the nose out and then fill up the nose post. I'm using a bit of batting here. And I'm just pushing it in with the back of a pen. Keeping the nose clearly shaped like a T. 
so you can push a little bit of stuffing into the corners of the tea as well if you want just to make sure that you really keep that shape and if the stuffing messes up the shape then take it out and then we can push the nose back in. So now the nose is filled with stuffing up to the level of the nostrils and when we look at the front it's still a good T shape. Now maybe the kind of yarn that you're using doesn't keep its shape very nicely. Maybe your nose keeps becoming the wrong shape. What you can do is take a, a thread of yarn and just sew in here and sew back again to pull that part of the nose into a T and you can take the threads through the back here tie them in a knot secure them nicely there and then that nose will stay a perfect T when you stuff your lemur's face it is really well worth taking your time with the stuffing I mean <laughs> we all know how much effort we've put in to get to this point and you know there's all of this intricate shaping on the face so you know take your time when you're stuffing and make sure you preserve the shape that you've worked so hard to crochet um, treat it as if you're sculpting the face now the face is crocheted to be the right shape you don't have to change the shape by stuffing it you just need to fill it up in a way that doesn't distort that shape or deform it or detract from it so just pay attention to the shape at all times when you're stuffing it. Okay, let's carry on crocheting. With the right side of the muzzle facing up, counting from the marked stitch on the lemur's left hand side. So this is your lemur's left. Counting from this stitch, skip four stitches. One, two, three, four. At the fifth stitch, join color two with a slip stitch chain one work two single crochets work three decreases Two single crochets, two decreases, mark the first of these two decreases. One single crochet, one increase, two single crochets, one increase, one single crochet, one increase. One single crochet, two decreases, mark the second one of these two decreases, so that is the last stitch that you just worked, two single crochet, Three decreases, two 
two single crochets leaving the last four stitches unworked up to and including the marked stitch so one two three four those four are unworked including the marked stitch don't tie off remove the loop from your hook and attach a marker to prevent unraveling now it's optional as you continue to keep your markers attached or remove them as you go keeping them attached will just help you recognize those stitches again later now using the off cut piece of color two place a slip knot on your hook so that's the same kind of knot that you would use if you were going to make a chain put the knot on your hook as if you're about to make a chain then on the right side of row three this is row three this is the right side join with a slip stitch at the right hand marker and now we're speaking of Luna's right hand so that is this marker that's Luna's right I'm going to remove my marker yarn over draw up a loop and draw through that loop on your hook then chain one then tilt the muzzle towards you until you can see the wrong side of the pallet where the chains are then catching those chains with your hook both of them work one slip stitch so yarn over and draw through that loop on your hook chain one and then working into the wrong side of the next marked stitch I'm going to remove that marker working into the wrong side of that stitch work one slip stitch then chain one and tie off uh, that piece of yarn was like a meter long so I just trimmed it so that my tail is much shorter and then you can weave in this loose end I'll come back after I've woven that in you can shape your muzzle like the picture at the moment it's kind of clover shaped or club shaped club as in the suit on a deck of cards so again you know pay attention to the shape that you have here and this is what you want to retain when you stuff the muzzle so you've got this chain going across here that will help to keep the nose cinched as it should be so when you stuff it it is already the right shape just keep that shape as you stuff it now continue crocheting where you left off so you can remove that marker and place the loop back on your hook chain one and turn two single crochets in the back loops three decreases So note that your third decrease gets worked into the same stitch where you joined your yarn across here just work into the back loop of that stitch two single crochets so you just ignore that as if it's not even there just carry on working into the next stitches then work one increase and three single crochets and do that twice then one increase Two single crochets and then again 
ignoring this as if it doesn't exist, working into the back loops of the same stitch where that is worked into, work three decreases. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is possible. And then two single crochets. Chain one and turn, one single crochet, three decreases. Two single crochets, one increase, two single crochets, one increase, three single crochets, One increase, two single crochets, three decreases. and one single crochet. Chain one and turn, working in the back loops only, three decreases. One slip stitch, chain three, skip nine stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In the tenth stitch, work a slip stitch, and then in the back loops only, work three decreases. and then tie off. So once again, this chain across the back is going to help keep the nose, the bridge of the nose cinched in. Now I'm going to be joining the pieces together and making the throat. So um, my yarn is a little bit curly, as I mentioned. Um, this is yarn that I've used over and over in the designing process and it's been unraveled a lot of times, so that's how it looks now. During this section, the top and bottom palettes will be joined together while attaching the tongue like a sandwich. So there's your sandwich. On the wrong side of the palette, so there's my palette on the wrong side. That's the side where I can see the chains. Join color four with a slip stitch in the first single crochet on your right. You want to find a single crochet and confirm that it's a single crochet. Look at the right side of the stitch. I can see that's a single crochet. 
the loops next to that are a chain. So I want to start in the single crochet, but I want to start on the wrong side of the palette. So there we go. I'm on the wrong side of the palette and I'm in the first single crochet on my right. Join color four with a slip stitch. Chain one. Do not work the loose end in as you go and work 10 single crochets. Now working on the wrong side of the bottom palette and starting in the first single crochet on your right. So there's my bottom palette. There's the wrong side of my bottom palette. Start in the first single crochet on my right. So if I look at the side, I can see that is a single crochet. I want to start in that stitch, but I want to work from the wrong side. and working six single crochet. Now continue working in the round, which means I'm going to go straight back to the first stitch of this row that's over there on the palette and I'm going to work into the right side of it and thereby I'm working in the round. I'm going to work two single crochets into the top palette. One, two, Now slide the tongue inside the opening so that it's sandwiched between the two palettes. And as you'll see in the picture in the pattern, I've got the tongue right side up and put it in that opening. So it's right side up and the straight edge must be near the throat, it's at the back of the mouth. Now remove the markers as you reach them. Insert your hook in the next stitch on the top palette that's there. Then into the marked stitch on the tongue. So I'm going to remove the marker. And insert my hook into that stitch. And into the bottom palette in the first stitch on your right. So there's the bottom palette. And on the bottom palette, the very first stitch that I have to work into is that one there on my right. So that is that is the last stitch that you worked into the bottom palette. That's the, the next available stitch that you have to work into. So you've got all three pieces on your hook. Work one single crochet to join them. Continue working through all three of those layers simultaneously and work five more single crochets to complete the join. Working into the next stitch on the top palette, the next Stitch on the tongue. The next stitch on the bottom palette. All three are on my hook again. Work another single crochet. And again, next stitch on the top, next stitch on the tongue. Next stitch on the bottom. 
Now when I reach this loose end, I'm just going to keep it hanging out on the side that I'm working on. Go into the next stitch on the palette, on the tongue, pull that loose end out of the way and go into the next stitch on the bottom palette and another single crochet and just do that two more times. Now I can remove this marker as I reach it. So I'll go into the top palette, then I'll remove the marker and go into that stitch. And then I'll go into the bottom palette. I only have one stitch left there to work into on my bottom palette. So then you know you've done it right. Then working on the top palette only, work two single crochets. If you look carefully at your top palette, you have two stitches left there to work into. One. And then you have one stitch left to work into. Then chain one and tie off, leaving a 20 centimeter thread. Now you can weave in the loose ends of the tongue, and the loose ends of the palette can be tucked away inside the jaw for now to be retrieved later. I'm going to weave those in quickly and then I'll be back. I'm going to tuck these loose ends into the bottom jaw. Now your jaws are joined with a little tongue in the middle. It's looking pretty cool. Remove the markers as you reach them. On the right side of the bottom jaw, okay, there's the bottom jaw, and this is the right side. In the fourth stitch of the last row, this is the last row, and I've marked the beginning and the end, so one, two, three, four. Join colour 2 with a standing single crochet. Then work 3 single crochets. Remove the marker to work your third single crochet. Then work one single crochet into the marked chain, so that is this orange one. And as you remember, we marked the actual V, v that we could see there. So remove your marker and then work into those loops that you marked. One single crochet. On the right side of the top jaw, this is my top jaw, right? That's the right side. Push your hook into the next mark stitch and out through the stitch before it so that the last two stitches of the jaw are both on your hook. I can clearly see I have my marked stitch and I have a stitch right before it. These are my last two stitches on the top jaw. I'm going to remove my marker as I do it. I can still clearly see my marker was in that stitch and I still have a stitch before it. So if you look at the picture in the pattern, at this stage the jaw is that way around and you have your hook coming in from this side. So you can swing your jaw around, then bring your hook over and insert it into that stitch that was marked and out of the stitch before it. I'll show you that again. There's my stitch that was marked. I'll go in there and come out of the stitch before it. So now I have two stitches on my hook. Another way to describe it is that I have the post of the stitch on my hook. If you go in one stitch and come out the other, you end up with the post on your hook. Then on the bottom jaw, 
push your hook through the right side of the same chain where you worked your previous stitch. So there's my previous stitch and there's the chain that it was worked into. Now to get in there from where you are, you're going to go from the back of the jaw, but you are going into the right side of the chain. So to get there from where you are, bring your hook around the front. So this is where you were, come up to the front, push your hook into the chain, and then come out the back. I'll show you again. This is how you started. Open the jaw so you can see the chain to work into. Put your hook into the chain and push it out the back of the jaw. So now you have that post on your hook and you have the chain on your hook. Then work your single crochet. So to do that you just yarn over pull through those stitches that are on your hook, yarn over and pull through the loops. Starting in the next stitch on the top jaw, it's that one, work one single crochet, one increase, one single crochet, Then working into the sides of the rows, you have these rows going back and forth here that end over there, work four single crochets. Into the stitches work two single crochets. Now that might be a little bit tricky to see there, so I've just worked into the side of this row. But that is also the loops of my stitch, that hole that's being made there. So those are my stitch loops that I need to work into. One, two, and then an increase. Then into the slip stitch, work one single crochet in the front loop only. In the nine stitches across the bridge, work two single crochets. One increase. Three single crochets. One increase. Two single crochets. And then in the slip stitch again, work one single crochet in the front loop only. Just make sure that you work into the slip stitch and not into the chain. There's your chain, but that one is the slip stitch. One single crochet. Then into the stitches, work an increase and two single crochets. And then into the sides of the rows. These are rows, so you want to work into the sides of the rows. Work four single crochets. Then into the stitches, work one single crochet, one increase, one single crochet. Now you're going to join the jaws together by the same method as you did before over there. 
On the right side of the top jaw, push your hook into the next marked stitch and out through the stitch after it. So your hook is going to go into this marked stitch that the blue marker is on. It's going to go in there and then it's going to come out the next stitch. Now where is the next stitch? If you look from the top, those two loops that you can see next to your blue stitch, that's your next stitch. So I'm going to remove the marker. We're going to go in that stitch that was marked and come out the stitch next to it. I'll show you again. This is where my blue marker was. I'm going to go in there and come out the other side. At the yellow marker, I'm going to insert my hook into those loops that it's marking. So I'm going to remove that into those loops and work one single crochet. And now your top jaw is joined to your bottom jaw. Then work one more single crochet into the same stitch on the bottom jaw. So now we've just worked into that chain there. So I'm just going to insert my hook back into that same chain where I just worked and work another single crochet and then work three single crochets in the remaining stitches on the bottom jaw. So there we start at our marked stitch. We only have three stitches left here so we just crochet into those. And congratulations, you've just completed the most complex muzzle puzzle in the galaxy. <laughs> the rest of the head is easier from here on, so you can breathe a sigh of relief and relax just a little bit as we continue. Well done on getting this far. Now you can just imagine what a mission this was to design in the first place, in a way that I could describe in a pattern how to make it. <laughs> From now on it's going to tell you to continue working in the round and use a running stitch marker which you should definitely do and um, yeah these next rows are very straightforward they're not difficult so enjoy the rest of the head thanks for watching i really hope you enjoy the rest of this crochet along and remember if you still have questions post them in the facebook group if you're enjoying my tutorials please give this video a like and if you'd like to know when I do another one, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. See you next time.